Hi, so today I'm going to be teaching you about uh, resolutions. So, um, you know, in companies, the way decisions are taken is by um, a matter being put to a vote. And when a vote is, um, is held, and then a resolution is passed, um, approving that decision or um, canceling it. So we've got three types of resolutions to talk about. Um, we have ordinary resolutions, we have special resolutions. And then finally, we'll also talk about what we refer to as a written resolution. Now, when we talk about ordinary resolutions, ordinary resolutions are resolutions that require a simple majority of the members who are present in person or by proxy voting for. All right, so um, ordinary resolutions are passed once you have a majority of even just one vote. So if you have maybe 49 people vote against and 50 people vote for a decision, then an ordinary resolution is passed. Um, special resolutions, on the other hand, are resolutions that require a qualified majority, all right? So it's a three-quarter majority, that's 75%. Um, are required to vote in favor of that decision for a special resolution to be passed. So if we have 100 members, for instance, at the meeting, you would need 75% of them voting in favor of that decision um, for it to be taken. Um, so that's what special resolutions are. So you would see generally that uh, special resolutions are reserved for very important decisions, decisions that typically can alter the identity of the organization or change its business. So things like change of name, um, your alteration of your objects clause, um, these are things that require special resolutions. While ordinary resolutions are used for um, basic matters like uh, change of directors, uh, the, the uh, change of your registered address, all right, those sort of things would um, require ordinary resolutions. Now, um, written resolutions, on the other hand, are resolutions that are passed without the need um, of holding a meeting for that purpose. So with a written resolution, what happens is that the resolution is drafted and then it is circulated and signed by all the members of that company who are entitled to attend and vote at the meeting. Um, by the time the last person signs, then that resolution is deemed to have been passed. So let's imagine um, we want to take a decision to uh, change our registered address. And there's a resolution that is drafted to that effect. And then it's given to me and I sign. And then maybe you're also a member of the company then I send it across to you and you sign. And by the time you send it to the last person who is a member of the company to sign, then when that person signs, um, the resolution is deemed to have been passed. And uh, written resolutions you'd see are reserved for private companies, all right? Public companies cannot pass written resolutions. Only private companies can. So those are the three type of, types of resolutions, um, ordinary, special, and written resolutions, um, but uh, we may also just mention um, briefly that um, we also have board resolutions. Um, when we talk about board resolutions, these are of course resolutions that are passed at meetings of the board of directors. When the board of directors meet um, and a decision is taken, it's put to a vote in the board, um, and then a board resolution is passed to that effect. Um, but before I'm um, closing, I just want to mention that there are certain resolutions that require special notice to be given first before they can be passed, all right? There are certain resolutions that require that special notice is given before they can be passed. Of course, when we talk about giving special notice, special notice is where there is an advanced seven-day notice that is given to the board uh, before the 21-day notice is then sent out to the members of the company. So you can look at that as a totally 28-day notice. Uh, now, the, um, the decisions that require um, special notice are as follows. One, the appointment as auditor of a person other than a retiring auditor. 
um, the filling of a casual vacancy in the office of auditor, the reappointing as auditor, a retiring auditor who was appointed by the directors to fill a casual vacancy, um, the removing of an auditor before the expiration of his term of office, the appointment or reappointment of a director aged 70 or more in a public company, the removal of a director from office, and the appointment of a new director to replace a removed director in the same meeting in which he was removed. These are the seven um, actions or decisions in the company that would require special notice first to be given. Um, if you look at the way the list has been arranged, you'd see that the first four have to deal with the appointment and removal of auditors. And then the last three have to do with the appointment and removal of directors. Hope you've enjoyed learning as always, um, and I'll see you some other time. Bye-bye.